Hey, I'm Jesse Yu and welcome to Psychology Sunday. Wait, it's not Sunday. So yesterday we talked about the history of cognitive psychology, and I was looking into my other two textbooks, and I don't really go into the histories, so we're just going to jump right into the basics of both social psychology and biopsychology. Today we're going to start with social psychology which is defined as the scientific study of feelings, thoughts, and behaviors of individuals in social situations. Now, questions that social psychologists ask themselves are usually things like, why do people risk their lives for others? Or, why do some marriages work and others fail? Basically, they just want to explain behaviors. Now, we will be talking about early experiments, like the Milgram experiment, which actually really fascinates me, and we've talked about it quite a bit in class, so I'm going to actually do a whole video just on that experiment but basically what that experiment is looking for is just how social influences about social influences how people of higher status than us can influence us like doctors policemen and so if we jump right now we're going to define some terms starting with dispositions dispositions are the internal factors that we hold such as our values our beliefs our personality traits or the abilities that guide our behavior. The second term we're going to get into is the fundamental attribution error, which is defined as the failure to recognize important situational influences on our behavior, and the corresponding tendency to overemphasize the importance of dispositions on behavior. So an idea of this is when we see someone being rude to another person, we tend to think that that person is just a rude person overall, instead of thinking, hmm, Maybe something happened today and you know, that person's being rude or there's something linked to today and that's just has them in a bad mood. The next term we are going to define is channel factors, which are certain situational circumstances that appear not to be important but actually have a great consequence on their behavior. Moving on to construles, what are people's interpretations of certain stimuli or situations? Construles are automatic and unconscious and social psychologists use this as a tool to understand certain situations. But the primary tool for understanding situations are called schemas. Schemas are knowledge structures consisting of any organized body stored information. We use schema to know what kind of behavior we should expect when interacting with others, such as a sales clerk or a professor. And a more universal schema is falling in love. Okay, so to end today's video, we're going to end with independent versus interdependent cultures. Independent cultures tend to value individualism. We like to be distinct from others, basically unique. We also like to achieve a high status by our accomplishments. Interdependent cultures are less about the self of being an individual and more about the self as a group. They value harmony in the group and status in the group depends on age and group member membership and just things like that. You can also see the difference between independent and interdependent cultures when it comes to work. Independent cultures want to be recognized for their work and doing a good job. They want to do their job their way and use the skills that they know. They also think that ideas are better when it's from an individual rather than a group. Which is different from interdependent cultures. They want their employer to have some responsibility. They want to work in a friendly atmosphere. And they also want to be completely loyal to the company that they work for. Also the belief that knowing more influential people is more important than actually having abilities. So that's it for the basics of social psychology for the most part. We'll talk about the basics of biopsychology in tomorrow's video. So don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!